Well, this toad came up a couple weeks ago for a lump on his toe, on one of his rear feet, and our default thought with that is that it's an infection, like an abscess. So we removed it, he did great, he healed up great, and we sent it off to the lab for a biopsy report just to be sure, and the biopsy came back as spindle cell, which is a cancer. Um, which can be very locally invasive. So even though the cancer hasn't recurred yet, what we want to do is get much better margins around the site of the surgery um, to make sure we've got all the cancer and that it won't come back. We mixed uh, anesthetic powder that was in here into this water, which is the special reconstituted water that we keep our toads in. So this is now anesthetic water. So this is our patient. And we're starting him at 10.08. So right now he's a very alert toad. He's up, he's looking around, his eyes are open, and you can see he's doing what we call guler breathing. He's moving his um, throat sac up and down. Um, so as he gets sleepier, we'll expect that breathing to slow down and um, him to be like uh, less up, more down, uh, less alert. We just have to be patient. Once an animal's under anesthesia, anesthetic monitoring is very important. Um, so we can know how he's doing, how the heart rate is, how the breathing is. In some animals, you can measure blood pressure and all kinds of values. Um, in the toads, we just go for heart rate. Um, and that's what this is. This is a Doppler, um, just like they use in people to measure blood pressure and listen to babies' heart rates um, on pregnant moms. Um, and we can put the toad's chest down on the Doppler and turn it on and we can hear his heartbeat. Um, so that's really good for us. Um, if the heartbeat starts to speed up, we know that he's going to be coming out of anesthesia soon. And if it gets lower than we want, then we know there's a problem and we need to address it. Um, so that's the key to our um, anesthetic monitoring for amphibian patients, in addition to watching to see when the breathing comes back. So right now, he's, he's definitely lower down in the water than when we started. And he's not moving his chin as much. It's still moving a little bit, but it's definitely slower. So he looks like he's at the depth we want, uh, so we're ready to get started. This is where the mass was that I took off originally. Um, so we're gonna take a bigger margin now, which I think means taking at least these two toes off. And you can actually see his heart beating right here. Um, so we'll put the Doppler on him in a little bit to listen to it, but we can see it too, which is really nice. And Eva will put this in formalin um, and submit it to the lab to see if we got good margins or not. The trick in trying to get good margins is leaving the skin to close. That's going to be the hard part to see how we did with that. Looks like it should close up okay. So do you mind the sterile saline? Can you drip that over him with a syringe? Mm -hmm. This is part of his ankle right here. So I've pretty much um, disarticulated two of his toes and they're in this little thing right here along with the, the area where the cancer was. So now it's a matter of cleaning this up and closing it. Ready? Yeah, just flush it good. Um, when this heals up, um, he should be able to get around okay. He won't be a release candidate. So in our situation where he doesn't have to hunt a great deal for food or compete with a lot of other wild toads, he should do fine. Do you want to rinse him with regular water again, please, Eva? I think um, we're almost done so we can start telling him he should wake up. And then before he's fully awake, we'll lay him flat out and get a really good post-op radiograph so we can see you know what the toes look like on the inside. Do you want more water? Yeah, let's rinse them again a couple times and then we can uh, take x-rays and before we take them over there, why don't um, you just put the Doppler on them for a minute so we can hear his heartbeat. Is x-ray all set? Yep. Okay, cool. So we're gonna take them into our x-ray um, unit to uh, get a quick post-operative radiograph and then we'll just bring them back here to wake up since all our stuff is here. Okay. Ready? Yep. Oh, and there's a little bit of breathing or swallowing or something. <gasps> Welcome back. Okay, 
So this is a good view of a normal foot right here. This is his right foot. And then his left foot, we took off this, all of this little toe and most of that little toe. I cut through the um, metatarsal vein there. So now in the future, if his foot starts to look swollen, um, we have a baseline to know exactly what it looked like after surgery. So we'll know later if something's different. Like if the cancer comes back and starts to like eat away at the bones, which it won't because we got all of it. So I guess we can just let him hang out here for a little bit. And so he starts breathing a little better. This guy's future from this point on is he'll be kept at the hospital for at least a couple weeks for us to monitor the surgery site. And um, right now Eva's going to give him uh, antibio or a pain and medication injection and he's going to be on pain medication and antibiotics at least for the next 10 days. Um, and once his foot heals up we'll take the stitches out and he'll go back to his regular house in the amphibian quarantine building where all the other toads are and the keepers will watch his foot for us and make sure that it doesn't start to swell up or have problems. So while he's here in the hospital, we'll be watching to make sure he eats, um, to make sure he poops, and to make sure he's moving around his cage that he's able to use the foot. So he's pretty alert now. He's at the point now where we can put him back in his cage without access to water. And then it'll, it'll probably take him another few hours before he's totally up and hopping around. Do you want to use it? Since I still have my gloves on. Yes. So we'll just give it up here. There you go. You ready to go back? What do you think? You're probably okay to go back. Yeah? Just about to hop? Trying to get your legs under you? So this is uh, the, the rack that our toads stay on. Um, we keep our toads, Houston toads, separate from all other amphibians in the collection because some of these may be released to the wild. We don't want them to come into contact with amphibians that have come from other zoos or other countries that are in the zoo, um, in the zoo collection. So, and I'll put him in here and I'm gonna take his water out for now so he doesn't hop into that before he's ready. And when he's fully recovered, he can get his water and his hide box back and he can eat some, be fed some crickets. Yeah, he's, he's working on hopping, he's getting there. So that wraps it up for the toad surgery. Um, the most critical point is gonna be the next seven to 10 days as we watch his foot heal up and make sure he can use it. Um, we're gonna be taking his sutures out somewhere around 10 to 14 days. And at that point, um, hopefully he'll be in the clear and uh, he'll be ready to be just another toad. Here's our toad patient. Uh, several weeks ago, we did surgery to remove a, a cancer a cancer mass from his left rear foot. So he has three sutures that I need to remove today. You could see, see we took two toes off. All right, so I'm gonna have Karina hold the toad and we'll take those little bitty sutures out. And this particular toad is apparently a little bit shy. Um, so the keepers don't see him move much, but every time they leave and come back, he's in a different place. So this is what it looks like with the sutures out. Whoop! You see he's shy. You can see he's missing the first two toes on the inside of his foot there. And it's a little red now because I just took the sutures out. Um, so what we'll do is we'll probably just keep him in the hospital for one more day just to make sure he looks okay with the sutures out. So we do have a little over 700 toads that are part of our Houston Zoo, um, Houston Toad Recovery Program. And um, some of these toads are destined for release and some are destined for captive propagation. And some are just here to maintain their genetics and make sure they stay, genetics stay viable in case there's another catastrophic fire in the wild. Um, so we treat the toads as a group, a population, but every once in a while we have an individual case like this guy um, with something like cancer, which people don't realize that amphibians can get cancer. Um, so it's a really great opportunity for us to use the medicine that we've learned in other animals and apply it to an extremely endangered, endangered um, local wildlife species.